conversation about exactly. you, but I didn't know it was in the context of Sunday school. Right, just brought, happened to bring it up at that moment, man. I had the same similar situation many years ago. <laughs> um, just listening to what the deacon was saying during our conversations in Sunday school and the facts they were spewing out from the books that they had at that time. Yet and still, that they weren't understanding what they had in front of them versus the people who they were speaking to. Now, you come from a, a, an area where you think you know and you trust these people, and you trust the intellect they try to put down on us. However, when you do come up with a question and they don't have answers, instead of them telling you, I'm not sure, maybe I should get back to you, or maybe I need to research that a little more, mm. they'll gloss over, like you said, mm. the facts, or they'll smudge and pudge on different um, ideas of what they heard, mm. but not sure about the facts themselves. My biggest altercation took place at 15 years old at Sunday school, mm. due to a deacon, some other people there at the church, just the idea of the sermon that he was speaking to those masters that were there, which was the young people who was coming in to learn something, he, was, he didn't know or understand that he was hurting some of those same people he's trying to spew this information out to. Mm -hmm. Derogatory statements, discriminatory statements, statements that were just untrue, that he couldn't back them. And when asked about those certain questions or how he think other people might feel, this ominous type of attitude that I speak for the Lord or I am the Lord speaking, so this is what you should follow. Mm -hmm brought up an altercation where I had to expose certain elements of people, mainly him and his children, that, you mm. know, that he was so ominous about his aspect of raising a God-fearing child, a devout Christian, but mm. understanding that he's hurting his son every time that he spoke these words because his son was not the Christian he thought he was. Mm. Mm. So when that moment happened where the truth and the questions that I brought up had to be answered, of course they got glossed over and not become a, a, a problem or a personal problems there, you know, within weeks, you know, so another question would arise and people would look at you funny like as, as if I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And all I did was pose a question mm -hmm. to the people or to the sermon he was speaking about that day, considering I'm looking at his own son right beside me crying like this can't be true because it's hurting what I'm saying when I'm here. If these are the words of God, why is he crying? Mm -hmm. So when I couldn't take no more, <laughs> and when I had to express the point, well, give me some answers or you're a bunch of hypocrites. Right. Stuff hit the fan. Right. And then, you know, I had to just put things where they were. My perspective is that this is an open-minded conversation. God's about about finding out the truth, about figuring out the truth, about researching and searching. So let's explore that, not just discriminate and call out people by names and, you know, know who you're hurting and who you should be bringing into this world. Part of the problems with the institutions of this world, part of the problems we find and we face every day. They're still going through this every day. I got friends who are in the church every day. They have alternative sex, alternative creeds, alternative everything. But when they leave there, they want to feel so good about the right word, the word. But the words being espoused to them is hurting. They're still crying like, you will never be truly accepted into these institutions until we become part of them or build our own that, equality of what they think is right and moral. 